Leanne and I am here today for another Real Talk video all about mental health. So a couple of months ago I posted my first Real Talk video on my channel in which I basically came out to you guys about my ongoing struggle with clinical depression and anxiety. And the response to that video was over overwhelmingly positive and the comment section for it really did become a safe place for everybody to be able to put their hands up and say hey me too. But I realised when I posted that video that this was something I was going to have to talk about again and sure enough my journey with mental health like many other people's doesn't go like this, it goes like this. So I was coming to make that video for you guys when the lovely people at Book Break pitched a book to me that was so well timed, it was obviously feet. That book was The Beginner's Guide to Being Mental by Natasha Devon with illustrations from Ruby etc. Now you guys know that I am a huge fan of Ruby etc, otherwise known as Ruby Elliot. I love her first book, it's all absolutely fine and I've been following her on Instagram and her daily comics for a really long time and Ruby really makes me feel like it's okay to be messy when I'm dealing with my mental health, that I don't have to strive for perfection and that I can think about drawing outside the lines of myself. And so when I saw that she had endorsed this book with her illustrations, I was like, I'm there, I'm so there. Natasha Devon is a mental health campaigner. She goes out to schools, universities and campuses to try and get the mental health discussion started early on to make safe places for people to say me too. She does TV and radio slots all the time to try and include adults in that conversation. And in fact, she recently started the Media Mental Health Charter, which is a way to make sure that mental health statistics are being reported fairly across the board. So girl deserves all the high fives for her hard work. And in this book she essentially gives us an A to Z guide of all of the most frequently asked questions that she gets when she goes out to her lectures. So for example A is for anxiety, O is for obsessive compulsive disorder, R is for recovery. And the lovely people at Book Break asked me if I could find a letter in the book which really spoke to me and create a video response. The letter that I picked is D for drugs. And while trying to find a way to broach this really complicated subject with you guys and my feelings on it, Natasha has written possibly the best first paragraph in the world in this chapter, so I'm going to read that to you. Natasha was at an event in which a very well-known sports person came out as suffering from bipolar disorder and wanted to relieve the stigma associated with it. And Natasha writes... At one point, the interviewer tackled the thorny issue of medication. The sportsperson spoke about his strong belief that if he had continued on the strong drugs that left him dribbling in the corner, he wouldn't be here to share his story. At that moment, I wondered whether, without the aid of my dose of daily anti-anxiety medication, I would have been there to hear it. In that one paragraph, Natasha says so very many things, and I find that to be true all the way through this book. Natasha is not afraid to get into her own experiences with mental health and to tell you all of the really awful things that she has been through to try and give you context for your own experiences and I really appreciate that. So before I start talking about this subject I will tell you a little bit about my experience with mental health medication. At the age of 13 I started to develop really intense agoraphobic symptoms and by the time that I was 14, I ended up spending an entire year of my life in my house. I literally left my bedroom for food and the bathroom and that's it. I literally could not walk as far as my front gate because I was terrified of what was in my own head, of what was outside. My anxiety was so intense that I self-harmed and that I could not talk to anybody about anything. The whole experience was just wrapped up in fear and shame and not understanding why I wasn't like everybody else and of course it impacted me greatly because I'd stopped going to school and I didn't have any friends and I didn't have any healthy interactions with people my age and so I stopped having a context and a reason to want to leave the house and if it had not been for anti-anxiety medication I would not have left my house. I would not have been able to get to the therapy appointments which were eventually set up for me in order to overcome this anxiety 
were it not for medication which allowed me to get my anxiety to a manageable level wherein everything was terrifying but not horrific to allow me to function. Later on down the line in my later teens I still self-harmed, I still really struggled with anxiety but mostly what I suffered with was clinical depression, was serious ups and downs, was not wanting to take care of myself, feeling just worthless and so sad all the time and if it was not for antidepressants I would never have been able to get my symptoms to a manageable level that I could think logically about changing things and I could think logically about why I felt like this and I could sort of piece together and work through therapy to get to where I am and I am in the middle of changing medications and seeking therapy again and finding ways to cope with everything that goes on behind the camera when you guys don't see me. Although the mental health stigma and the stigma about talking about having clinical depression and anxiety and any feelings of uh, not being able to cope the way that normal other people cope with everyday life is being lifted. More and more we are able to say me too and find safe places to talk but the stigma about anti-anxiety and anti-depression medication has definitely not lifted, it has definitely not gone anywhere and in fact one of the things that Natasha mentions in the book is that she can often go to talks and she can get through the whole thing about saying what her mental health has done to her over her life and it's not until she tells them that she's taking 100 milligrams of SSRIs or antidepressant medication that she gets a collective gasp from the cloud because they can't believe that she's taking such strong medication. Which brings me to the things that I hear most frequently about taking medication. That's just a crutch. You really have to learn to get better on your own. Isn't taking that kind of medication really addictive? Aren't you doing yourself like long-term damage? Actually that medication is just a placebo from the drug companies who really want to make a lot of money. It's a very corrupt industry you know. You are part of the reason that our government and health system can't afford to pay for itself. You are weak. And if you think, sitting listening to this video, that any of those opinions are out there and wacky and you can't understand where those things come from or why people say them, I would like to direct you to a very, very popular book on Booktube which came out very recently, which is supposedly this wonderful discussion about Matt's recovery and how he has decided to actually live and continue on. And yet I got less than a third through this book before Matt turned around and said yeah you know I tried antidepressants and stuff but I decided I really had to be strong and try and do it on my own because using them was really just helping me cope every day but it wasn't getting me any better. I was so mad at that book that I actually put pants on and drove 20 minutes to take that back to a bookstore. I returned that book. I can count on this many fingers how many times I have ever returned a book to a bookstore. But that is a very widely held opinion about mental health medication. There is a massive stigma to taking any kind of drugs every day of your life. And Natasha also talks in the book about this anti-drug argument of some depression, a lot of depression nowadays is situational in that there is a socio-economic factor to it. People cannot get jobs, they cannot feed their family and therefore they are depressed and so rather than just giving these people antidepressants we should actually be encouraging the government to look at the problems. I absolutely agree, we must do that but we must also treat these poor people in the meantime. Mental health problems are on the whole biological. They are created by your brain making a lack of serotonin. You have a clinical lack of happy in your brain and often a clinical increase in all of the other things that create fears and anxieties and feelings of worthlessness and depression and not being able to cope with everyday things. This is a chemical biological phenomena. It is not purely psychological. There is a psychological impact, there is a huge psychological component, there is sometimes a socio-economic component, there's sometimes lots of other things like bullying, like 
mourning and grief like abuse. There are whole hosts of other components but at the base of it all it is primarily a biological thing and I say to you that you would not tell a diabetic not to take their insulin. Shade. And I say to you that you would not tell an asthmatic not to take their inhaler. And I say to you that you would not tell somebody who deals with chronic pain not to take pain medication. Well, some of you would. The bottom line is that these medications save lives. These drugs save lives. And it's so important that we try and make a safe place for people to talk about their experiences with taking medication to be able to say me too and just the same way that all of you lovely people managed to do in the comments on my last video. And one of the things that I love about this chapter and this, well, entire book really is that Natasha often gives advice in a very practical way. At the end of this chapter for D for Drugs she gives a checklist of things that you should do if you're considering taking medication or if you have started taking medication and how to assess whether that's working for you and how to change it if it's not and how to determine whether you need to end that at some point or whether that's something that therapeutically should continue for you for longer. And she also offers a wonderful link which I will put at the bottom of the screen here and in the description where you can go and do more research about medications for your head. As for myself I am continuing my journey with mental health medication and finding out exactly what works for me. I have recently changed to a new medication that I'm not getting along with as well and I guess that's maybe one of the reasons for this little dip that I've been in for a while but I'm climbing up the other side of it and so can you. Natasha's book comes out on the 17th of May and I really encourage you to pick it up if you have the opportunity to. And please guys feel free to hit the comment section here and to tell me about your experiences with mental health and mental health drugs and feel free to use that as a safe place where you can say me too and you can connect with other people. I hope you guys are all well and I hope to be with you more in the next couple of weeks. Be safe.